What's going on guys and welcome to who to sign for. Now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode. Before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and that the player ratings and potentials of the players may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season. Obviously you don't have to follow all the tips. This is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you can sign for a certain club. This is mainly aimed at those you out there who maybe need to the game and just need a little bit of advice or for those you're either who just want a few recommendations of what players to sign for a team that you may be using in career mode this year and in today's episode of who to sign for guys had to do it recently did Watford relegated to the championship after last season's finish in the Premier League well, here's another yo-yo team. Norwich City, the Canaries over the past few years. Up, down, up, down. Back to the championship for the upcoming season. And I've got to say, they're a brilliant team for an RTG as well. Now, Norwich have got some very unique kits, as we know. Playing in yellow with a green trim as well. Uh, a nice goalkeeper kit too. And an away kit as well. Uh, sponsored by Lotus Cars, who I hear the sponsor for all the time. I listen to the High Performance Podcast. Anyone that listens to that podcast knows all about Lotus Cars, of course. But um, they're, they're a really fun team to use, and, and let me tell you why. Now, both times they've got themselves up to the Premier League. They've just really struggled to adapt. I mean, they really have. Daniel Farker uh, did a tremendous job uh, to get them to the Premier League, but in their first season in it, they just really struggled to adapt to the competitiveness of playing top tier football. That's understandable. They went back down and they were promoted again. And last season, it was the same problem. Daniel Farker was eventually replaced uh, a third of the way through the season. Dean Smith came in to try and inspire some grit and toughness into the side. But unfortunately, they just didn't have the quality to survive once again. I will relegate it back to the championship as well. It's an alright team, Norwich. Now, a few years ago, they had a pretty decent young core coming through. Now, you'll remember in the first season in the top flight, there was Ben Godfrey at centre-half, Jamal Lewis at left-back, Max Ahrens at right-back, and you also had Emi Buendia, their more creative player as well. But unfortunately, they, they've lost them. <laughs> they've lost those players. So when you inherit this Norwich team, you've not got a great young Ben Godfrey, a great young Jamal Lewis, a great young uh, Emmy Buendia. You've only got Max Ahrens. Max Ahrens is the sole survivor of those quad players. It's still here. And of course, there are still rumours he will move on in this summer window. I'd like to see him stay at Norwich, though, to be fair. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. Even so, Norwich have been able to produce some really good young talent, produce and develop some really good talent over the years. Unfortunately, most of that has now gone. You probably say Ben Godfrey and uh, Buendia are the best of the three that have left. Jamal Lewis kind of struggled at the Magpies, hasn't he? Hopefully, he'll be able to rejuvenate his career there uh, under Eddie Howe. But even so, um, yeah, Norwich have had a decent track record of producing and developing young talent. Either from the academy or, in the case of Ben Godfrey, for example, signed as a, a young player and then developed uh, after he came in from York City. Um, but Max Ahrens is still there. He'll be your star youngster. And there are a couple of players that, again, are okay for now in the championship and also for the future as well, such as Norman, uh, the Scandinavian midfielder as well. But what you will notice, though, is there are quite a few old players here that will need to be shifted on. Now, Norwich are a three-and-a-half-star team, which means in the championship, you will be one of the stronger teams. The objective you're given is to win the league title. That is pretty tough, though, because you're, you're one of a number of three-and-a-half-star teams. You're not the out-and-out -out favourite. There'll be a number of three-and-a-half-star teams you've got to compete with here at Carrow Road. I would say, personally, just getting up is the only thing that matters. If you don't win the league title, that's okay. If you finish runners-up, that's fine. If you've got to buy the playoffs, that's fine. It's just about getting to the Premier League, no matter how you do it, so long as you do it. It's going to be tough. It's quite an old team. Again, there are a couple of decent youngsters. Max Ahrens, uh, Solis, uh, Norman's not too bad either. But again... It does need a bit of a rebuild, this Norwich team. And your budget isn't the strongest either. You've got around £17 million to play with. That's that's pretty decent for the championship, to be fair. But if you do want to win the league title like the board ask, £17 million is not going to get you very far. So in Norwich, I definitely would recommend starting the rebuild process as soon as possible. You've got quite a lot of players in their 30s. Lucas Rupp out of contract at the end of the season. Um, uh, Tim Krull, the man between the sticks. The captain, Grant Hanley, is 29, but I'll definitely shift him on as well. Zimmerman as well, he should go. And also Timu Puki. Now, I know that Puki's been Norwich's main source of goals for a few years now, but... 
I do recommend selling Timu Puki in the first season. 75 overall means he's one of the best players in the team, but he's in his 30s. He'll decline in terms of overall pretty quickly. I would definitely need to cash in now, get as much as you can, and look to replace him with someone just as good, but also far younger with potential for the future as well. So a new signs with Norwich, again, you've got around £17 million to start off with. It's it's not a lot of money. You've got to make sure you get good value for money deals. And there aren't many better good value for money deals in Fever Crimo than this guy. Yep, the jack of all trades, versatile. Dox's legend hero. <laughs> I'm his number one fan, you know that. The Zoa of Vitesse. I've signed him in about two thirds of my who to sign for episodes. Because really, this guy is the ultimate budget RTG Bargain by Bazoa of Vitesse. Starts off 76 rated in his early 20s right now. Has 80 potential, but as we all know, this guy can literally play anywhere, which is why he's perfect for an RTG team in transition and rebuilding for the future. He starts off as a centre-back, but I wouldn't play him centre-half. I'll play him as a central midfielder. And in Norwich's 4-5-1, he'd be absolutely perfect. Get the low defensive work rate up to high, and he'll be an ultimate box to box in this team with solid defensive stats decent attacking stats and an amazing passer and dribbler of the board as well yeah Bazoa, don't miss out on signing this guy he is definitely my number one target but the replacement for Timu Puki I'd recommend this guy as well uh, Berto Rame uh, this is a young Argentine forward just 22 years old 75 rated his contract is up come the end of the year so you can get him for under the valuation of 10 million pounds I spent it was 6.75 mil no, 7 mil, um, plus Sam Byram as well. You notice Norwich have got quite a few fullbacks here. Brandon Williams is on loan from Manchester United, but he can play both left back and right back. Max Aarons, of course, will be a starting right back for all the years you're at Carrow Road. He'll be a starting right back forever uh, with Norwich City. And a couple of those as well, uh, plus Sam McCallum, a decent youngster out on loan too. So you don't really need Sam Byram. He's a good squad player, but you can afford to sell him in season one. We swapped him to soften the transfer fee for Berto Raume, and this guy is literally the perfect replacement placement for Timu Puki. Why is that? Well, he's 75 rated, so he's the same rating as the finished striker, but he's also nine years younger with already 75 strength, 73 jumping, 75 sprint speed, 80 acceleration, 81 attack position, and 79 finishing as well. He's an all-rounder, really. He's strong. He can jump. He's not too small at 5 at 10, so he will some head win some headers here and there as well. He's pretty quick, and he's got a good finish on him already as well. In the championship, he'll be your main source of goals. He'll bang them in, no doubt about that. He's my number one target as a replacement for Puki. And of course, I would recommend a new goalkeeper as well. Uh, obviously, you've, you've got Michael McGovern, who's about 38 years old. Yeah, he's going to go in season one. But also Tim Krull as well. Now, the Dutch shot stopper is more than good enough for the championship, of course. At 76 rated, he'll be one of the best goalkeepers in the championship. But in his 30s, I would recommend bringing in someone that's younger, who's just as good and has got good potential for the future as well. That guy, Carlos Acevedo. You can get this guy for under devaluation as his deal is up come the end of the year. He's on a low wage as well. He's just 25 years old, so several years younger younger than Tim Krull and he's a rating higher at 77 as well. He's the perfect replacement for the Dutch shot stopper. He'll come in, he'll be your number one. I'll be a starting goalkeeper for all the years you're at Carroll Road. Angus Gunn isn't too bad. He's 25 years old, 72 rated. And in the championship, that's good enough to be a starter. But what you don't want to do with Norwich is take a step back. You could possibly afford to if you're doing a long-term project and you don't mind staying in the championship for more than one season. But if you're looking for an instant return to the Premier League, you've got to make sure the players you bring in to replace the players you're selling are just as good. You don't want to take a step back because, again, you're a free and r star team. That does put you amongst the best in the championship, but you're not the out-and-out -out best. So if you want to win the league title, like the board are asking for, you can't really afford to take a step back. Acevedo is a step forward on Tim Krull, and he's several years younger as well. As uh, so the following signing I made was Danilo Doki. Uh, again, with Norwich, there are a few center arse here. I definitely recommend selling. Ben Gibson, Zimmerman, Grant Hanley, the captain as well. I'd sell them all and look to bring in some younger talents. Danilo Doki is one of my favorite bargain buys in the game. Just like Bizarre of the Test, his contract's not coming at the end of the year, but he's in his early 20s. He's 74 rated, and he's got 80 potential as well. He's the same overall as Grant Hanley. So he's not gonna, you're not going to take a step back in terms of starting overall. And he's also six years younger with 80 potential as well. I love Doki because he's got 87 strength. He's six foot three, so he's really physically strong. And he's also got low pace, but with a stop of development plan, you can get it up to a really good rating as well. So he's, he's going to grow to a great physical center half as the years go by with a solid player trait as well. 
in the final couple of signs I made here, uh, as you can see, uh, a couple of squad players coming in. We signed uh, James Trafford uh, from Bolton Wanderers. This is a goalkeeper currently on loan from Manchester City right now, but in the game, he's a permanent Bolton Wanderers player. Uh, you can get him for under a million pounds, which is his valuation. And finally, I managed to swap out Michael McGovern. No one was putting in a bid for the veteran goalkeeper, so I just gave him to Bolton Wanderers. Trafford is only 64 rated, so of course, in the first couple of seasons, you're not going to play him whatsoever. He'll be your third choice behind Acevedo and also Angus Gunn as well but he's got 78 potential so he grows really nicely and eventually he'll become your backup goalkeeper your sub goalkeeper and a really solid stand-in uh, for Carlos Acevedo as well and also sign a new center half as well uh, for Kundo Garfez once again you are going to sell you're probably going to sell Ben Gibson Zimmerman definitely get rid of him and also the captain Grant Hanley as well you want center halves with a similar ability if not slightly better but also so several years younger as well. Garfez starts off 73 rated, 21 years old. So he's one rating higher than Ben Gibson, who we gave away to Colon for him. And we also get a player that's far younger as well with good potential. 79 potential, we can sneak into the 80s, low starting wage as well and a really good bargain buy to start in your Norwich team to begin with and for the future as well. You've got to remember Kabak is only on loan from Schalke, which means that obviously during the season, he might get recalled. It actually happens in this save. So you want to make sure you've got a good amount of CBs here that have got good quality as well. And yeah, no doubt about it. Garfez and Danilo Doki definitely match that criteria right there. 73 and 74 rated respectively as well. So really solid center arse. And again, we're not taking a step back. We're taking a slight step forward in terms of ability as well. Um, I also changed the position of Josh Sargent as well. He's the young American forward. Now he starts off as a right midfielder, but I, I personally think he's much better as an out-and-out -out striker. He's a really hard worker, both in and out of possession as well. High, high work rate. 86 stamina. He just needs a better finishing touch, Josh Sargent. As a backup striker for Berto Rame, he'll do the job in the championship. And as you see, the final signing I made was Norwich City. Was a new backup right back. Again, with Norwich, Max Irons will be your starter for all the years you're at Carrow Road. But you'd also want someone to be a replacement if he ever goes down. Obviously, Sam Byron, we got rid of him. He could have done the job. Brandon Williams is a right-footed player. So you can switch him from left back to right back if need be. But I would recommend a new official right back back for now and with a good potential for the future as well. Calvin Ramsey of Aberdeen is a great shout. He's 17 years old and whilst he is only 64 rated, so not the highest right now, he's got 80 potential. Max Ahrens will always be your starting right back at Carrow Road. Lock him down. Don't let him go like Ben Godfrey and Buendia, for example. But this guy as a backup right back will do the job. You can get him for around a million pounds. That's a, that's a decent transfer fee. He's on a super low wage as well. And again, starts on 64 rated. Not great in the first couple of seasons, but he'll grow to 80 potential. So as the years go by, he'll be an amazing backup right back and a stand-in for Max Ahrens as well. 10 ratings lower, but four years younger with solid potential as well. Definitely recommend picking him up for a very low transfer fee. So that was it with Norwich. As you can see, we spent practically every single penny, uh, penny in the summer uh, on seven new players. When you look at the change here with Norwich, the players leaving. Zimmerman, 28. Rupp, 30. Puki 30. Hanley 29 all those players in their uh, late 20s or their early 30s and again there's players coming in the young talent here practically everyone in their early 20s Acevedo 25 yes but also Ramsey as a teenage talent as well we made this side far far younger and we look to replace that old core that Norwich had of Buendia and Lewis and Aarons and Godfrey with a younger core for the future now that's exactly what we've got Players are going to step in and do a job in the first team, like Bazoa and Doki and Bertarame, for example. And also a much younger team with potential for the future as well. So as per usual, we would simulate the end of the season with our Canaries. See if we could hit those objectives of reaching the last 16 of the FA Cup. Tough one. And also winning the league title and getting an instant bounce back to the Premier League. And as you can see... Well, it was going to be tough. And as you can see, we went into the playoffs... We are QPR in the semi-finals. 
and we managed to get through them to take on Watford in a battle of the relegated teams in the final where we lost it on penalties. Absolutely gutted. A penalty shootout away from promotion back to the Premier League. Burnley stormed the championship with 32 wins in 46 games. The Baggies finished runners-up. And Watford, to be fair, were in third place. Would have been favourites. They're actually the strongest team if you put them all in the championship. And in the end, won it on a penalty shootout. How gutting is that? We were a penalty shootout away from going back to the Premier League and in the end with our second season in the championship. To be fair though, like I said at the top of today's episode, it's a really tough objective win the league title. And in my opinion, you, no matter how you go up, so long as you do, that would be considered a success. No doubt about it. Because the championship, as we know, is such a competitive division. It's a really, really strong one. There's several great teams there that you could definitely see would have enough quality to compete for a Premier League place. You know, your West Broms, uh, you know, obviously Burnley, Watford, uh, we Norwich that went down as well. You know, th there's several teams that would be good enough to compete for a Premier League place in season one. So it's not a surprise that we went into the playoffs. Just gutted we missed out on the spot kicks. We did hit a cup objective though, so that was quite nice to see. Uh, Crystal Palace knocked us out in the last 16, but even so we hit our cup objectives. That was kind of cool. But unfortunately, a penalty shootout away from promotion. In the end, the Hornets sting the Canaries. They go back to the Premier League. We'd have a second season in the second tier. Even so, Norwich are a great team for an RTG and a rebuild, though. You know, they really are. You've got the Carrow Road Real Stadium in the game. You've got very unique kits, really nice-looking kits as well. Very aesthetically pleasing, too. And again... They're a side who, over recent years, have had a very good recent record of producing or and developing uh, young talent, either from their academy or bought in elsewhere. So they're a team that have quite a bit of emphasis on developing young players, which makes them a perfect FIFA career mode team for realism, if you will. And again, over £17 million budget, it's not a lot to work with. And in the first season, you've got the challenge of being asked to win the league title in your first season back in the championship and get back to the Premier League instantly. That's not going to be easy. That is not going to be easy whatsoever. So it's a great challenge in Season 1. I definitely recommend them. Unfortunately, we missed out on promotion on the spot kicks, but you might be able to do it first time. Definitely, definitely worth giving these guys a go, though. You know, again, from from uh, from Norfolk, obviously, it means that you're not going to have uh, too many, too many, I should say, fierce rivalries. You will have some rivalries, but not too many fierce rivalries, um, which makes them quite a likable team, I feel, Norwich City. But again, yeah, really, really fun team to use with a real stadium, Carrow Road, lovely, aesthetically pleasing kits as well. You've got Max Ahrens at right back as well. He'll be with you for all the years. You've got Top Cantwell, too, who we recalled from loan as well. Uh, not to mention Rashika and also Solis, the young striker Josh Sargent, uh, Omar Bamidele, the young centre-half as well. There are some decent youngsters you, you, you inherit, but it's still a side that needs a rebuild and younger players as well. Really fun team for an RTG rebuild in the championship. I definitely recommend giving these guys a go. Great fun challenge. But that will end today's episode of WTSF, guys. Big thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode of Who to Sign For very soon.